I'll say one thing about Hollywood Studios, they're nothing if not determined, and never has this been more obvious than with the Terminator franchise, which now officially spans six movies and four decades of cinema history. The only problem is that when the last good Terminator movie came out, I was seven years old and the Soviet Union was still a thing, and every movie since then has been an increasingly futile and embarrassing attempt to recapture the magic of Terminator 2. But I guess if you throw enough shit against a wall, eventually something's gonna stick. And in this case, our turd de jour is Terminator Dark Fate, the fifth tired rehash of the same basic storyline that's been doing the rounds since 1984. The movie comes out later this year, but we were treated to a teaser trailer a few days ago, and what I've seen basically confirms my worst fears. So the trailer kicks off with a generic teenage girl in a pickup truck, complaining that her life sucks while she's being chased by a guy who looks like he just finished his shift at the Genius Bar, but then the, uh, androgynous thing in the truck with her does some slow-mo matrix flip onto the rear deck and throws a piece of rebar at the Apple Genius, and then he turns into a liquid Terminator. Oh no, I'm shocked. Never seen a Terminator suffer an apparently fatal wound, only to morph into liquid metal and pull the thing out undamaged. Why did the liquid metal effects in 2019 somehow look worse and less convincing than the ones from 1991? Anyway, the Apple Genius is able to separate his metal skeleton underneath from his liquid outer coating to make two of himself. Liquid Apple Genius leaps over their truck and tries to spear the androgynous thing with the rebar, but it deflects it with its arm and it exposes the metal underneath the skin. Could this be a Terminator as well? Does anyone even care? So anyway, their car gets disabled in a bit of really clunky editing, and both of the Apple geniuses are closing in on generic teenage girl and androgynous thing. The situation is looking bad for our gender dynamic duo, but then a car shows up and a pair of legs get out and we're all supposed to think it's Arnold, and I guess that's supposed to be exciting somehow. I haven't been excited about seeing Arnold on screen in 15 years, now I just kind of cringe whenever I see his saggy old face. But anyway, these legs actually belong to Sarah Connor. And I mean the real Sarah Connor, not this small frightened child trying to impersonate her. Or whatever this was meant to be. So anyway, old Sarah Connor shoots the shit out of the geniuses and blows them up with a bazooka, and then she takes generic teenage girl and androgynous thing with her. Then she quizzes them about what the hell they are, even commenting that she's never seen a Terminator like androgynous thing before. No kidding, Sarah, none of us have, and I think if we're honest with ourselves, none of us really wanted to. Anyway, she explains that she's here to protect generic teenage girl, who asks why, and old Sarah Connor says that she used to be her. Is this some way of suggesting that the creation of Skynet, Judgment Day, and the birth of the human resistance is some kind of cyclical, inevitable event? Like you might be able to prevent it once, but eventually the same circumstances will align themselves again for a different generation? Or is it just desperate and creatively bankrupt Hollywood hacks, trying to justify the fact that they're using the same exact storyline yet again, because that's all you can ever really do with Terminator movies. I'll let you decide. So anyway, old Sarah Connor decides she needs an extra dose of nostalgia to try to keep this movie afloat, so she takes her gang of girlfriends, or whatever they may be, out to a cabin in the woods to find another franchise star that's now collecting his retirement checks. And then we get to see an even older and more tired looking Arnold Schwarzenegger. I honestly felt like I aged about 10 years just looking at him. Anyway, the trailer ends with a really boring CGI fight between Androgynous Thing and the Apple Genius. Where do I even start with this? I suppose I might as well address the casting first. It's nice to see Linda Hamilton back in action, or just doing anything to be honest. Her Sarah Connor was one of the most compelling and awesome female ass kickers in cinema history, but that was almost 30 years ago. Times have changed, Hamilton's 62 years old now, and she looks it. Fifteen years ago I think she could have made a decent comeback as the kick-ass Sarah Connor we all remember, but now she just looks old and tired and not particularly enthusiastic about being here. I also think it's interesting to consider this quote from her about passing up a role in Terminator 3. They offered me the part, I read it and I knew my character arc was so complete in the first two, and in the third one it was a negligible character, so I said no thank you. Speaking of old and tired, Arnold Schwarzenegger's in this movie. Yup, that's 
That's pretty much all I can tell you from his two seconds of screen time. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if it's just a glorified cameo for a bit of fan service. He was awesome in the first two movies and just about got away with the third one, but I think we all know Arnold isn't really capable of physical action scenes now. He was always about the size and the physique, and now that he doesn't have that anymore, the movies have to go to more and more ridiculous lengths to try to explain it, and it's just kind of sad to see him reduced to this. Then there's the Apple genius. Why has every subsequent Terminator felt like a step backward from the liquid metal guy from T2? I mean, he could shapeshift into virtually anything, and he made good use of this skill. He could turn into the literal floor if he wanted. And then we had the TX from the third movie, who could use weapons but was still constrained by its basic physical form underneath. And lastly, whatever this idiot was supposed to be. The point is, whatever their flaws, each Terminator looked the way they did because it served an obvious purpose, and it at least made them memorable as a result. The first one was a big hulking tank that could give and take a lot of punishment, and it was so intimidating that most people knew not to fuck with it. The second was a fast and agile killing machine that usually took the form of a clean-cut authority figure that most people wouldn't challenge. The third was an attractive young woman designed to get positive responses from human males, and the fourth... Well, the less said about him, the better, I guess. The point is, they each made an impression. They were all different in some way. But this chump just looks as generic and boring as possible. The sort of guy you'd see carrying a lactose-free, decaffeinated latte over to his Toyota Prius. I get that this would probably help him blend in with other humans in 2019, but honestly, it doesn't make for a very engaging experience as an audience. Terminators are supposed to be terrifying despite their attempts to look and act human, but I felt about as unnerved and intimidated by this guy as I would by a bowl of soggy cornflakes. And his special skill is that he can split himself in two, like that's supposed to be some mind-blowing new concept that changes everything. Why is that even considered useful when you could just as easily send two Terminators back instead? In fact, why not send 20? Or 100? It's not like Skynet is short of the things. Fuck off, film. Anyway, let's talk about the androgynous elephant in the room. This is Grace, a human-machine hybrid sent back to protect generic teenage girl. What are you doing, Terminator? Is this some kind of joke? Why would you cast someone like this in a serious action movie? I mean, she just looks like a skinny, confused fashion model that's been plonked into a film and told to look scary. All gangly limbs and awkward attempts at fight scenes that are about 90% CGI. Remember in Terminator 2 when Arnold laid waste to everything around him with that minigun? Or Linda Hamilton cocked that shotgun one-handed? They actually did that stuff with real physical weapons, and holy crap, you can't help but respect them for it. But what do we have now? This... thing. You know, I thought Jai Courtney was a black hole of charisma in Genesis, but Jesus, he looks like Will Smith compared to this gormless plank of wood. And at least he could stand up properly. Jesus, sort your posture out, would you? I'd like to talk about generic teenage girl too, but honestly the trailer tells me absolutely nothing about her, where she comes from, what her actual purpose is, or why she's even important. So go figure. But hey, at least they got all three girls in that clumsily photoshopped poster, right? I'm sure they'll go for the obligatory female empowerment angle in this movie, because why not, right? It's 2019 so everything has to be about that now. But people who see the Terminator movies solely through that lens are doing themselves a real disservice. The first two movies saw Sarah Connor transform from a meek, downtrodden waitress into a powerful kick-ass warrior, but the point of that transformation wasn't to show that girls can shoot guns too, it was to show the dangers of losing our inherent humanity. Sarah Connor becomes so ruthlessly focused on preventing Judgment Day that she's willing to become a cold, unfeeling assassin that will literally murder an entire family to complete her mission. A Terminator, if you will. But just as she's losing her humanity, the Terminator with her is gradually becoming more human until it finally achieves the highest of human virtues, our compassion and our willingness to sacrifice ourselves for the good of others. The message of these movies was never about pushing the virtues of one gender over another, it was about recognising that there's still something inherently good in humanity, and a warning about putting too much trust in machines that don't share those same values. But hey, maybe universal concepts like that are outdated in our current political climate. 
So what's the upshot of this weird petri dish of tired old franchise stars making unwelcome comebacks when they're way past their prime, boring and awkward looking newbies with all the screen presence of a pair of cinder blocks, the Apple genius pretending to be a scary Terminator, special effects that pale in comparison to a movie made more than a quarter of a century ago, and a plot that's just the same exact crap that Terminator movies have been rehashing ever since the first one. Well, it feels an awful lot like this could be the final nail in the coffin of the Terminator franchise. Honestly, I can't believe they made another one after the disaster that was Terminator Genesis, and based on what I've seen in this trailer, it really looks like they shouldn't have. And that's all I've got for today. Go away now.